And also this morning, we have a, a special guest preacher. Uh, many of you know her. Her name is Denise Jones. Uh, she is an extraordinary teacher, uh, has just a, a beautiful spirit and anointing on her teaching, and excited she'll be speaking into uh, today's facet of the DNA of a disciple. Amen. What a privilege to be with you this morning. Thank you, Pastor Chris, for the invitation to um, talk about Jesus. <laughs> it's probably my favorite topic. I feel like Pastor Chris does when he started um, our sermon series and he was talking about the deeper of God's word. He said every Every session could be an entire series, and that's how I fear about, feel about prayer. We could have warfare prayers and healing prayers and intercessory prayers and help me Jesus prayers, and we could just diagnose all of those. But I really had wanted God to give me a message where I kind of walked us through a process of praying and that was not the message the Lord gave me. And I wrestled with the message because it is a very vulnerable <clears throat> and honest message. But I felt like God spoke to my heart to just simply share a little bit about my journey of talking with Jesus. And so in my obedience, because I'm more afraid of him than you, that's what I'm going to do today. I love the passage in Exodus 33 that Pastor Chris read that said the Lord would speak to Moses face to face as with a friend. Isn't that a beautiful picture? The beauty of relationship that is friendship with God. And then what Paul says, he said in Philippians when he was writing to the church at Philippi, I love the New Living Translation because it says, pray about everything. Tell God what you need. It's bringing God into those intimate places in our life when sometimes there are those desperate moments and it's when you're not sure how you're gonna pay the mortgage or what's going to happen to the wayward child all the way down to those small detailed prayers that we have that only God knows that we've never told anyone. I think I've learned the value of prayer from my parents. It was modeled to me in my life. My sweet parents were going to be here today, but my mother is sick, so I think they're watching online. But my father was raised Pentecostal. He was raised by a Pentecostal preacher, and he became a Church of God and Pentecostal preacher. And my father is very loud and funny and demonstrative, and so his worship is all of those things. And I remember specifically in college, my room was all the way across the house, and I would hear his prayers coming through the air conditioning vent. And sometimes he was singing and sometimes he was weeping. But I heard him talking to Jesus. Now my mother was raised Baptist. She's very Southern and quiet and reserved. And her worship is very different than my father's, but she will pray for anyone at any time, anywhere. She worked at State Farm for 25 years and only heaven will reveal the prayers that that woman prayed for the lives of people sitting right across from her. But I do remember the very first time I heard her pray out loud. We had some friends visiting and they had brought their poodle and their poodle was hit by a car and came yelping into the yard. And I watched my Southern mother in her white slacks kneel down into the green grass and begin to pray for healing 
for their poodle. And before she was done, that poodle took off into that yard. He was healed. He was saved. He was sanctified. He was filled with the Holy Spirit. I mean, that poodle was transformed. And I remember as a young child, I was only like seven years old, and I was thinking, this is my mother. And she was talking with Jesus. And then I remember my very first memory in this life. I was four years old in the Indiana Plains in an opened air outdoor campground. And I knelt my four year little old elbows into a metal folding chair and I knelt on the dirt earth next to my best friend, Dawn McPherson, and together with her mom, we prayed the prayer of salvation because somehow my childlike heart realized that it needed a savior. And I just talked to Jesus. And then I also realized the great privilege we have that we often didn't see modeled in the Old Testament. Moses built a tent to meet with the Lord. And I don't know if you've ever read the book of Leviticus. I think the Lord has a great grace when his people get to Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. I think there's an extra measure of grace. But one day I was reading the book of Leviticus and I was reading Leviticus 16 and it was talking about the priest as he was preparing himself to enter into the Ark of the Covenant, into the Holy of Holies, where the Ark of the Covenant and the presence of the Lord dwelt. And I sat in a moment of all that was required for him to access the presence of the Lord. And I realized that now, that 1 Corinthians 3 tells me that now that holy of holies, what abided between the angels' arms of the cherubim, now the presence of the Lord has taken up root, and now I am that tabernacle. And your heart is that tabernacle. And the holy of holies has come to dwell inside of us, and we can make a tent of meeting anywhere over the dirty dishes at the kitchen sink. We can make it in the carpool line. We can even make the presence of the Lord and talk with Jesus on the ninth hole at Great Waters. We can make it with a desperate cry. Or we can make it with a gentle Whisper, but it is just talking with Jesus. And I've seen the power of prayer actively, like you, at work in my own life. And doesn't it change everything? Doesn't it change everything? And I also learned that he likes to talk to us. The prayer isn't just a monologue. In fact, that verse in Exodus 33 says, God spoke with Moses face to face as with a friend. And when you're, when you're with a friend, it's a two-way conversation. And you and I have a speaking God that longs to speak to us as well. And so we can enter into this dialogue with our Heavenly Father. And Jesus, he told his disciples this in John 16, he says, I have much more to say to you, more than you can now bear. But when the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth. He will not speak on his own. He will speak only what he hears, and he will tell you what is yet to come. He will glorify me because it is from me that he will receive what he will make known to you. 
So that hovering cloud over the tent of meeting with Moses is now the hovering cloud over our hearts where the Holy Spirit will speak. And he speaks to our spirit the very heart and thoughts and purposes and plans of a living God. And so we can talk to him, but we can also hear him talk to us. Recently in a Bible study that I have been leading, the question came up multiple times, but Denise, how do I hear from God? And I tell people so often, the greatest way to hear from God is being close to him and spending time with him because proximity breeds recognition. The more time we spend with him in prayer or in worship or in reading his word or in moments like these, the easier it is for us to begin to recognize his voice because we're spending time with him. You and I both know when we pick up that phone and a child's on the other end, we don't have to ask who it is. We know immediately who is communicating with us. But if we haven't spent time with that person, if we haven't been around them or gotten to know them, then we pick up the, when we pick up the phone, we might have to say, hey, hey, who, who is this? Friendship breeds recognition. Jesus said, my sheep will know my Jeremiah 33, 3 says, call to me and I will answer you and I will show you great and hidden things you have not known. He is longing to speak to our hearts. And sometimes we, we hear that name that we just can't get away from, that the, the, the Holy Spirit just keeps placing in our spirit, and it's that tug that we can't get away from. That is God's voice speaking to us. Sometimes we're reading our Bible, and a passage of Scripture is just illuminated to us, and it won't leave us throughout the day. That's the Holy Spirit speaking to us. Sometimes we sit in a service like this, and something is said, and we just can't get away from it. That is the Holy Spirit speaking to us. He wants to dialogue with us, and I've also learned that he wants to speak to me during my prayer time. And so in that prayer time, I've tried to learn to cultivate space for him to speak. I remember one day during my prayer time, I began to just kind of linger in his presence and a friend's name came to mind and I just couldn't get her off my mind. And so I just asked the Lord, I'm like, Lord, what are you wanting me to do with her? And I felt that gentle whisper that comes in that place where the Holy Spirit resides. And I felt in my spirit you need to invite her to do a Bible study. And I don't know how holy you are, but I'm not always super holy, so I argued with Jesus. And I reminded him, I said, Lord, I've invited her to do a lot of things, and she's never one time wanted to do anything I've asked her to do. And so I went back to my prayer time, and there it came again just talking with Jesus and Jesus talking with me. And I said, okay, Lord, if this is you, you know, he can handle our if this is you questions. He loves to confirm himself to us. If this is you, would you just confirm this to me before I call? And so I sit down in my daily Bible reading and I open up my Bible to the book of Acts and it's the story of the disciple of Philip who the Holy Spirit speaks to him and he says, I want you to run up next to that chariot. And so here Philip is just running up next to the chariot. 
and he finds this, this Ethiopian eunuch sitting in the chariot, and he sees him reading from the book of Isaiah. And Philip is like looking in the window, and he says, do you understand what you're reading? And the Ethiopian looks at him and he says, how can I unless someone guides me? And I said, okay, Lord, I hear you. So I picked up the phone and I called my friend. And I extended an invitation that I felt like the Holy Spirit had given and she said, I have longed for years for someone to help me understand the Bible. I was just talking with Jesus. You know, sometimes we think our prayers are too small or too silly for God to care. But I love what Psalms 37, 23 says in the New Living Translation. It says, the Lord directs the steps of the godly. He delights in every detail of their lives. There is not one thing that matters to your heart that does not matter to the heart of your Heavenly Father. When my 13-year marriage ended, it was a heartbreaking journey. But more heartbreaking than that was I had no children inside of that marriage. But I did have one honorary 13-year-old Shih Tzu named Maggie. And for some reason, I was sitting there with her one day and I was just talking with Jesus. And I said, Jesus, please don't take Maggie until you have a family for me. A couple years later, I would meet a man with five children. A couple months after we met, he was at my house one day and he said, you know, Maggie isn't acting like herself. And I said, I know. Two weeks after we married, she died. God delights in every detail of your life. There is not one piece of your story that doesn't matter to the heart of your living Heavenly Father. And I've also learned that there's no prayer too big. Can you imagine the prayers that went up when Daniel was walking towards the lion's den and the prayers that went up through the night as he was in the middle of that lion's den and no one outside knows what's happening? And when that door is opened, every lion's mouth has been closed and Daniel walks right out of the lion's den. Can you imagine the prayers that went up when the three Hebrew children were thrown into the fiery furnace that was heated seven times hotter? And yet scripture tells us that when they were delivered, they came out without even the smell of smoke on their clothes. Can you imagine the prayers that were prayed? In fact, Acts tells us that while the church was praying for Peter to be released from prison, an angel of the Lord arrives into the prison cell. Peter is in between two guards. He's shackled. The guards never see him leave. The shackles fall off in silence. The angel takes him past two guard posts, delivers him out of a fence, and no one is the wiser that Peter has left. Because the church was praying. And these miracles of the Old Testament and the miracles recorded in the Gospel and the book of Acts 
It is the same God that you and I have today. It's the same God. He's no different. Maybe you need a miracle today in your health. Maybe you need a miracle in your marriage. Maybe you need a miracle in the life of your wayward child. Maybe you need a miracle in your finances. It is the same God. And I love how we're told how to pray in Hebrews 6.14. It says this, Therefore, let us with privilege. One translation says, let us boldly. It means with the privilege of relationship, approach the throne of grace. That is the throne of God's gracious favor with confidence and without fear. When you and I make Jesus Lord of our life, we, we are afforded the privilege of relationship of sons and daughters. And I just want to show you a picture of the image that comes up to my mind when I envision this passage of scripture. This is the picture I always think of. At this moment in time, John F. Kennedy is the most important man in the world. But that little boy who is his son has the privilege of relationship that gives him the access to play underneath his desk with confidence and without fear. That is a picture of the access that you and I are invited into in relationship with our heavenly And he continues when he says, so that we may receive mercy for our failures. Because we've never done anything so bad that we cannot bring it to the heart of our Heavenly Father. And we will find his amazing grace to help in time of need, an appropriate blessing coming at just the right time. He just wants us to talk with him. So this morning, as we share communion together, I just want to invite you, after you've received communion, to linger longer. Maybe you need to tell God what you need. Maybe you need to ask God what he wants to speak to you. He invites us in this moment to just talk with Jesus. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your truth. Thank you for this moment. Thank you for our privileged access into your presence. At any time of day or night. God, you know the need of every heart and the hunger of every soul. May we not miss the privilege you afford us to talk with you about anything. 
Speak to us, we pray. In your precious name. Thank you so much, Denise.